infant diarrhea. We will mention in the exam too in detail. This is important three category for the blood agar based on the biochemistry reaction of their hemolysis blood cell or not. We categorize them alpha and the beta hemolytic. You're going to remember these slides very well. We will talk about this on and on in the examinations too, and sometimes we'll be using in this lab also. Okay, isolation of the pure culture. We'll go this real quick. Why we isolation pure culture? We want to get a single colony. And we will do the practice of strict plating in the lab. Spread the plating and the pore plating um, in the lab next week and the following week. And I would say this, strict plating is for identify the presence, absence of the bacteria so we get the pure culture. Spread the plating and the pore plating, we basically is a numeration of the bacteria. We need to know the population of the bacteria. This thing I will talk real quick, because all of you are going to practice today about the strict plating. Very <laughs> intensive at the beginning. Then you flame the loop to do a less intensive in the second couch. Flame loop again to a less intensive for the third one, then the fourth one. And finally, after incubation, you'll get those colony. That each individual colony is a single colony representing a pure culture. What it means a pure culture is only one genus name and one species name. Everybody will practice in the lab. Okay, so that's called the streak plating. What is spread plating? Spread plating is you're using hockey, a hockey spreader or plastic spreader to spread the bacteria on the other. And uh, sometimes there's a lots of bacteria there. You can't even count. How do we know it's countable or not countable? We give them an acceptable zone. You always remember, it's 30 to 300. That's acceptable zone. Now, in order to reach this acceptable zone, you have to do C area dilution. C area dilution has tenfold and a hundredfold. So tenfold is one to nine, mixed very well, one to nine again, you, like you did in the chemistry lab. And a hundredfold will be 0 0.1 go 9.9, .9, and repeatedly to do. The idea is, at the beginning, this bacterial culture has a lots of bacteria. And I said it could be go to the 10 to the 8. We have to do the dilution, because otherwise it's a big chunk of the bacterial mass on the middle. You can't know the population. So we have to do a serial dilution, because we have to reach the acceptable zone is 30 to 300. Now, what is pore plating? Spread plating is the agar is already there. You spread. Pour plating is we using melted agar. We pour the agar onto the surface. Then we mix it, it will be solidified. So compared to the spread plating, the pour plating have a one good thing. It saves time and energy because you can make the agar and do the plating at the same day. And spread the plating, you need one day to prepare the agar. But what's the bad thing for pour plating? Melted agar usually at 55 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Celsius. That mild heat will kill the bacteria. So pore plating, there's a one thing not good is that for pore plating, mild heat will, I would say, more or less kill some bacteria. So the number usually you get from pore plating is a little bit lower compared to the spread plating. But why we have to do the pore plating? Because it's quick. And you get the number immediately. Sometimes we want to know the approximately number, how many in the food matrix especially. Then we have to do the pore plating because it saves one day. This is what happened for bacterial colony after spread the bleeding. You can very nice see these colonies, and you have to count them one by one, like you count the apple. Okay, that's the acceptable plates is 30 to 300. Less than that, maybe a cross contamination. More than that, it's too many. You have to do a dilution. So, this is what we already mentioned. 
In our real life, there is other magic tools we can use. This is called spiral plating. The single machine is about like twenty thousand dollars. So they do the stir, and there is a negative pump, negative pressure pump here. This container is usually alcohol. You can rinse the pipe. This is usually water. The, the final rinse. Then so you absorb the liquid and you do the spray. Spiral plating, the good thing is that it's usually to do the beverages and the liquid because it can cover multiple dilution factors. So you don't have to do dilution all the time. You can cover 10 to 10 to the 4, 10 to the 1 to 10 to the 4. But there's one very limit for this one is that you can do this in the food products because the pipeline is too thin, it will be stuck there. So that's spiral plating. And there is an automatic reading machine you can read the column there or tell you the number immediately in the other time we have to do a manual okay this is the slides you should use for your lab work this is the slides which is tell you the colony morphology there is some difference we want to mention when we talk about the cock cell lords vibro that is cell morphology, which means shape of the cell underneath the microscope. When you look at here, you see the punctiform, circular, irregular, rosopus, flat, raised, convex, entire, undulant, located, erose. This is we talk about is colony morphology. Colony morphology is a bacterial colony on the agar plates. It's different. This is the slides. I recommend you to print them out. When you print them out, you do the lab on Thursday, um, you can do the compare to the culture, what is strict plating today, what it looks like, what is the colony morphology on your plates. Okay, so that is one I want to mention. Several other things, we talk about measuring microorganism counts. These are easy, so we just go over these slides. First thing first, the easiest way is count colony on the plates. You count like an apple. But we have some other tools we can do. We can do a chamber. There is some special chamber. Okay, we put it there, and we're gonna add the bacteria there. Then we count it. The so method's called Petrohorsey counting chamber. Like you count your blood cell in your other classes. But there is a one very side impact for this type of technology is they cannot distinguish live and dead cell. It's all there. Spread plating, we can differentiate live and dead cell because the live cell will survive there. This is all bunch of them together. This is, I believe you did it before in your lab. <coughs> Color spectrum or absorbance. You set up the wavelengths, you put in a chamber, you read through it. That means you test the turbidity of the bacteria. The so more turbidity, which means more population of the bacteria. Again, you can differentiate live and dead cell because it's all there. <coughs> this is the one basically we did in our uh, drinking water sample. It's a filtration system. We put a filter there. The filter is 0.45 micrometer. So the bacteria can go in slow. Most of the bacteria will not go through is 0.22 micrometer. So when you go through, you put them on an agar, and they don't want to grow. So viable counting methods using the funnel, it's a method quickly to do the testing the bacteria in the drinking water. Because in the United States, based on the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, the policy, your drinking water is zero tolerance for coliform and fecal coliform. So when you test your drinking water, use this method, you should not see any bacteria there. If you see this is from your drinking water, that is obvious is a fecal contamination, it becomes a horrible. Which means you should get a notice from the city, municipal council. <coughs> this water you have to boil. Otherwise you cannot drink it. Because so many colonies there. Last one I want to mention. <coughs> Use membrane filtration system. We also could test the fungi. This set of system called isograde, I did it in the company when I just graduated uh, about 12 years ago. 
<coughs> you put this negative control system to the machine, the engine neg negative control uh, power, pressure, going through the funnel, put a membrane filtration there, and put on the agar plates, you see, see it grow. This is a very typical method to test the fungi. Before we do any of the further tests, if you see these fungi, we usually use a microscope to do the morphology identification. Because fungi, when we talk about these lucifers, penicillin, and aspergillus, we will do this in the lab because I will make a very bad molded bread. We want to see whether it's contaminated with aspergillus, lucifers, or penicillin. And I tell you once, this is a memory filtration method called isograde, also called testing. It's a population of the fungi. It's the same thing like we are testing drinking water. We use a viable counting method with a membrane filter system. Okay? So these are the things where we get done. So, end up here, we are almost done. We are all done for the lecture stuff for the examination one. Then we go over the question on Thursday.